So in this section, we're going to talk about the use of ultrasound to evaluate the skin and the soft tissue, particularly in the context of soft tissue infections. And so the scanning technique is going to be very similar to what we've talked about in the previous section. That is, we're going to look at patients who have pain, they have swelling, they have erythema. This is going to give us a dynamic assessment of what's going on underneath the skin surface. And so we want to place the, position, the patient in a position of comfort. Right? We want to adequately expose the area of concern. And in this situation, we really want to use a generous amount of gel. These patients are hurting. And so the more gel you use, the more you're able to glide the probe across the surface of the skin and really not put, place a lot of pressure on that skin that we're going to be assessing. And if the place is amenable, just use a water bath, right? You can submerge the area that you're concerned about in water and be able to glide the transducer right across the top uh, of the surface of this, the water and be able to assess for what's going on underneath the skin and soft tissue. Now, like we said before, we're going to use a high frequency linear transducer, and this is going to really give us the best resolution because we're using that high frequency. But some patients may require us to tr switch to that low frequency transducer to get the penetration through the skin and soft tissue, uh, depending on what's going on. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the soft tissue anatomy. There's multiple layers of the skin and soft tissue. We have the epidermis and the dermis on top, right? You have the subcutaneous fatty tissue layer. Deep to that, you have a fascia, which oftentimes covers up a muscle. And then deep to that, you have bone. And so all these different areas in the skin and soft tissue, you can see on the ultrasound. So here we have just a normal ultrasound of some skin and soft tissue. And we really see all those different layers. We see the epidermis and dermis at the top. You see that subcutaneous fatty tissue kind of looks very marbled in its appearance. You see the fascia, it's gonna be a bright line covering up the muscle, which is gonna be this very coarsely striated linear structure. And then we don't see it here necessarily, but we'll have bone, which is gonna be that uh, hyper echogenic focus with a, with a deep shadowing uh, beneath it. So let's dive in and talk a little bit about skin and soft tissue infections. So first, we want to talk a little bit about cellulitis, right? This is going to be the first thing we'll build on top of that and talk a little bit about abscess. So if we look, here's just the normal skin and soft tissue. You have that thin epidermis and the thin uh, or the thin dermis and epidermis. And then beneath that, you have that fatty tissue layer, that, the subcutaneous layer that has that very marbled appearance, right? You have that bright fascial line and then the very speckled, linear, coarsely striated muscle deep to that. This is just normal uh, soft tissue appearance. But when we throw an infection in there, there's going to be several hallmarks of that infection that we want to be concerned about. And we talked about uh, in the course of our education, right, the various different characteristics of inflammation. That'd be rubor, right, redness, tumor, swelling, color, like that heat that's produced with all the extra blood flow in the area, dolor, pain, right? And then kind of keep on the or idea, the move no more, loss of function, right? And in ultrasound, we're going to see just a lot of just extravasation of fluids in the subcutaneous tissue. And so these are the various different things that you're going to see, rubor, tumor, collar, dolor, move no more, and just kind of fluid in the interstitial space that we wouldn't expect to see otherwise. And so as we transition to ultrasound, we're going to look for these various different things. So we can see increased thickness, right? So if you look at the area of normal skin compared to the area of inflamed skin, that epidermis, dermis, that subcutaneous layer is going to be thickened. It's going to be a little bit bigger than the adjacent normal areas, right? You'll see a change in the echogenicity, you know, reflecting the fact that there's change in the blood flow, right? So it's going to be a little bit more echogenic than the non-inflamed area that may have a little bit darker appearance than the, the inflamed area, which can be brighter, right? You'll see a little bit of a, a loss of differentiation of that marbling, right? So where the the normal tissue is going to have that, that marble of like the little septae in terms of all the, you know, the fatty lobules, you're going to just lose that. It's going to become more homogenous in its echotexture as it becomes inflamed. And then you're going to see edematous changes, right? That interstitial fluid as the capillary vasculature becomes really leaky and leaks that fluid out into that, that space. And so you see kind of this little dark rivers that kind of traverse through this area that's going to be that, um, that edema in the tissue. So here's an example of just a patient with cellulitis. Now, mind you, if you looked at this alone, you couldn't necessarily differentiate this from like lymphedema or lower extremity edema, you know, things like that. Um, so you really have to contextualize this with what you see on the skin surface. But if you have a patient who's got that pain, that redness, that swelling, and you see something like this, this would suggest the diagnosis of, of cellulitis. Right, you can throw some color on there. You may see some color in the vasculature, um, but you're not going to see really any um, you're just going to see color in the vasculature and those those little areas of, of edema shouldn't light up for you at all. Here's another example, just kind of that real cobblestoning appearance that kind of a lot of that uh, in, interstitial fluid kind of in that area of concern. This is a patient's hand with some hand cellulitis.
And here's some more cobblestoning just to kind of further reiterate kind of what we're seeing. We see thick into that subcutaneous layer. We see loss of differentiation of the fatty septa, kind of loss of marble appearance with that interstitial edema. So moving on to abscess, this is really what we're going to be looking for. Is that area of erythema going to have just cellulitis or is there going to be some drainable fluid collection underneath it that we really need to be concerned about, right? And so that's what we're going to look for uh, with, with our skin and soft tissue ultrasound. And so an abscess is going to have several characteristic hallmarks, right? It's going to have a hypoechoic, and sometimes it's anechoic, but oftentimes hypoechoic fluid collection, right? You'll see this complete loss of the tissue architecture, just kind of this random fluidy stuff within the, the interstitial space or within the, the subcutaneous space, right? So that's the first thing. It's going to have a relative ovoid appearance. So it shouldn't be perfectly symmetrical. It's going to be kind of this ovoid appearance. It may have, it's going to have irregular borders. So it's kind of like these little fingers that spider out from the center, right? And it should be fluctuant. So if you push on that thing, you may see some movement. There's some swirling in that tissue. And these are going to be the various characteristics of an abscess. Now, mind you, you can have inflamed subcutaneous cyst, right? You can have like an epidermoid cyst, which may look very similar to an abscess, and it's going to have more of a smooth border um, compared to that that um, irregular border that you see in abscess. Uh, but these are things that you're going to see in that subcutaneous area. So as we talk about these different components of the, the abscess, let's look at the various different layers of this abscess, right? And there's various different parts that are going to kind of be involved in the, the different stages of inflammation of this, this soft tissue infection. So the, the core, right, the center part, it's going to be that core, it's going to be that necrotic, that liquefied tissue that's going to be the pus, right? You put the needle or put the needle or the knife in it, and that's the pus that's going to come out. So that's the necrotic core, right? Around that, you're going to have an inflamed penumbra, right? You're going to have that area that's going to be pretty much, we call it the flag on, right? It's going to be the stuff where the architecture is still preserved, but it's inflamed to the point that it's breaking down to become a larger necrotic core, right? And so you see that around that that um, that core, that penumbra around the core. Around that, you're going to have more inflamed tissue. So this is just the stuff that, you know, there's general inflammation going on. You're going to see the, the characteristics of cellulitis we talked about before with the thickening, the increased echogenicity, the loss of differentiation. This is just the inflamed tissue um, around that, that phlegminous area. And then finally have just the rest of the tissue around it. So here's an example of another abscess. You can see kind of that ovoid appearance, very irregular border. It's going to be very hypoechoic relative to the stuff around it. You can see some inflammatory changes around it, the cobblestoning kind of around it. Throw color on there. You can see some hyperemia, but the cobblestoning won't, won't color up. Uh, and this is just an example of a, just a a simple cutaneous abscess, right? Put some color on that. You can see kind of that color flow. Moving on, here's another one. So this is an example of another kind of necrotic core with kind of that inflammatory changes surrounding it. So kind of moving around, showing in, in real time that anechoic, hypoechoic, heterogeneous necrotic core uh, and the inflamed penumbra around that. Here's an example of some fluctuants. So if you push with that probe, you can see some movement of that, that fluid or that, that purulent material kind of sloshing back and forth, um, suggesting that this is going to be a fluid collection in the subcutaneous area. Now, mind you, if you have a fresh hematoma, this can do the same thing. Um, there's various different causes of this. So you always have to clinically correlate with what you're seeing on the skin surface. But this is one of those hallmarks of an abscess. Here's another example, kind of that, that core, that anechoic hypoechoic, heterogeneous inflamed core uh, with the penumbra of inflamed tissue around it. We can put that in action here and see kind of what happens as we move through it. One thing you'll note, especially in the patients with IV drug abuse, is you'll see these abscesses cropping up around vascular structures, right? So it's not uncommon uh, in the forearm to see a thrombosed vessel um, that's traveling through this abscess. So one thing just to keep an eye out for as you're scanning around the area where you expect a vein, look for a vessel, look, look for that superficial thrombosis that's traveling through that abscess that would suggest a shooter's abscess. Finally, here's another example of an abscess that we looked at earlier.